Hi, I'm Andy Parkey, Managing Director of the multi-award winning Speed Screed. I'm here today to talk about screed joints in underfloor heating. Uh, so there's two real considerations uh, that you've got to think about with underfloor heating uh, and in screed. So you're looking at, first of all, controlling the joints uh, through shrinkage. So if you've got the shrinkage cracking, and you're looking to minimise the the effects of shrinkage cracking, making sure that you, you're not getting any of those uh, cracks in the screed, then that's one consideration. The other consideration is thermal movement. So the, the, the screed heating, cooling, and the thermal movement uh, effect of the screed, because the screed only moves twice uh, by itself. So, well, it'll only move twice, uh, first of all, by itself, so in terms of shrinkage, so as it dries, it'll shrink. And then the second time uh, that, it's, that it will ever move is through outside influences. So that's through the structure of the building moving, through other construction joints, uh, you know, moving if they're below the, the actual screed, and through thermal movement. So if we're going to examine, uh, first of all, shrinkage, so the, the, the guidelines really are for, with underfloor heating for shrinkage, is bays of a minimum or, a, a, sorry, a maximum of 40 square metres. So that's 40, 40 square metres. Now that's based on an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. So if you've got an aspect ratio of 2 to 1, uh, but you've got some restraints in there, so I don't know, say it was a, a, a large kitchen or something like that, and you've got a centre island positioned in there then those uh, that 40 square meters is is going to reduce so you've got to bear that in mind so that's on a two to one aspect ratio with no with no restraints actually in the screed so that's based on a on a sand and cement uh, product if you're looking at a uh, flowing screed calcium sulfate then the base sizes are larger uh, there's less natural shrinkage in the product and you can actually go up to 300 square metres, again based on the 2 to 1 aspect ratio. But again, if there's, if there's any restraints within the, uh, within the screed, those uh, figures obviously uh, come tumbling down. So if you've got things like re-entrant corners uh, within, the, within the building, they're all what the screed looks to is it builds up the stress be it thermal movement be it shrinkage it builds up the stress within the within the screed and then looks for the weakest point for it to release the uh the, the you know that that stress and tension that it's actually built up so you're looking at th those main two uh reasons for potential cracking and control of cracking where you're going to put your joints the other reason that you may want to uh, put some joints in there is is literally to separate zones. So if you've got if you're heating uh, at different temperatures, different rooms, uh, you know you could have a situation where you've got perhaps I don't know, say student accommodation. The rooms are you know two, three, four degrees uh, warmer than say the corridors, uh, etc then uh, what you can do is you can separate those two slabs and put a joint in. Generally, if, you, if you're doing that, we, we would normally recommend a, a vertical control joint. So if it's in flowing screed, that would be a rigid upstand. So it's basically a, a T-shaped uh, a, a product that sticks to the, uh, you know, to the membrane uh, and then is is rigid, so flowing screed can butt right up to it and, and won't push it over. It, it's uh, ether foam with a rigid plastic upstand either side of it, just to give it uh, obviously that strength to withstand the the, the force of the screed. When it's uh, when the screed's finally dry, you can then just trim to the uh, to the level of the uh, the, the floor screed. If you're laying a sand and cement screed, so you haven't got the, the issue of obviously it being a, a fluid product, you can just use a, an ether foam 
be it a five mil or a, or a 10 mil. Uh, and literally you can just press it open. You can just uh, effectively sandwich it in between. And then what you've got then is you've got a, something that will prevent or minimize the heat transference between those two slabs. So that may be a reason uh, as, as well. So always, always worth seeking advice on individual projects. Uh, quite often the design engineer will uh, get involved and will uh, give advice with, uh, with regards to this. We're happy to, to chat also. Thanks for your time.